It's an act shared around the world. It sits with us in the mornings as we collect our thoughts, on our daily commute, while we wait for a flight, or ese ratito con mami once in a while. Regardless of the occasion, coffee has always been there for us, giving us energy and strength with great taste, reassuring us, and keeping our focus. But lately I've noticed, our relationship has been one-sided. That's why today is different. Today I want to ask coffee, where did you come from? Who picked you? Was the roasting difficult for you? Did they treat you gently in the packaging? Did you wait for me a long time in the aisle? I'm sorry. I haven't been a very good friend to you, but I'm hoping to change that. Puerto Ricans consume almost 30 million pounds of coffee a year. 90% of that is imported. It's time to give back to a friend who's never disappointed us. My name is Manolo Lopez, and this is Mi Puerto Rico, El Café. The Atienza family and Hacienda San Pedro are one of the few local companies executing a coffee that's 100% grown, toasted, and packaged in Puerto Rico. And I'm blessed to have Rebecca Atienza, the company's president, show me around. Cuando es que tu bisabuelo, ¿verdad? Sí. Que empieza, él empieza simplemente la finca para coger café. Sí. Mi bisabuelo era español. Entonces, él quería en algún momento poder eh, preparar un café de alta calidad para exportarlo a, a España. ¿Y qué, 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 qué significa un café de alta calidad en Puerto Rico? Es un café que se recoge así, maduro completamente. Tiene una, diferentes eh, pasos ¿verdad? de despulpe, de fermentación. Nosotros secamos al sol. Eh, se separa por color, tamaño y luego se tuesta. ¿Y el árbol? Entonces usa zona, no, no es mezcla como los cafés comerciales, el café 100% maduro. Lo ideal es empezar en uno, vamos al otro, vamos al otro, vamos al otro, hasta que... Ok, ¿y qué hago si, con okay. insectos? Que todo. Está, todo. Esto se es, va. pero una a una. ¿Una a una? ¿No una podemos una? coger el árbol y...? No. Y presumo que al, al fin del día tienes que tener las manos negras, las manos negras, las negras, pegajosas, las la uñas. Uña. Así que esto no, hoy que me hice la manicura no es el mejor día para hacer esto. ¿eh? O sea que si papi pasa por aquí no nos va a regañar. Sí, porque si él ve un árbol que lo dejan a mitad, va a sí, parar no el tractor y va a decir, <risa> se me devuelven. Tiene que volver a, tiene que enviar gente para que lo... Lo repasen, como dicen en el término. Necesito saber, como, como de todo esto, ya yo puedo sacar el, este café como para un día entero, como para una fiesta, ¿verdad? Pues te tengo que contar que para hacer un espresso, un espresso es una onza, necesitaríamos aproximadamente 300 granitos de esos que tú acabas de... Tú me estás diciendo que aquí hay quizás uno o dos espresos. <risa> Así, uno o dos espresos. Yo llevo media hora... Aquí estoy todo su para... Yo me río, pero es, 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 es fuerte esto, es complicado. This is hard work. Picking the right beans is just the beginning. Coffee roasting is a whole other art form. Local coffee makers are faced with the challenge of honing their skill while also doing whatever they have to, to make sure that not only coffee, but also tradition survives in years to come. Yo creo que si nosotros le preguntamos a nuestros sobrinos, eh, ¿Qué quieren hacer cuando sean grandes? Ninguno te va a decir, no, yo quiero sembrar mi patio en mi casa y tener unos lechones y venderlos. Quieren ser famoso en TikTok. <laughs> ya está. I first met Emerito Ruperto during orientation week of our freshman year in college. Almost immediately, we realized we had a lot in common, including skipping much of the orientation to partake in another essential aspect of our college experience, drinking. He is also the first person in his family to go to college. His family's business, Café Coquí, is an example of most coffee processing facilities in Puerto Rico who blend their coffee with imported product. Emerito is not only a dear friend, but also one of the savviest and hardest working people I know. Para los años 70, 80, hasta finales de los 90, hasta el huracán George, el café se sembraban lo que se llaman como los parceleros. Yo vivo con mi esposa en una casa en el campo, tengo tres, cuatro cuerdas de terreno, en esas tres o cuatro, cuatro cuerdas de terreno siembro café, siembro plátano, siembro ñame y tengo tres o cuatro corrales de lechones. Y por eso que se producía tanto, porque cuando esa gente cogía el café con la familia, 
eh, no maltrataban el palo, no se les perdía un granito. Y durante el año que no hay café, pues corto plátano, saco los ñames, para las navidades vendo los lechones. Ese modelo cambió. Eh, estamos en el primer coffee shop de Hacienda San Pedro. Sí, pues eh, hace aproximadamente 14 años atrás eh, empezamos a como que a, a darnos cuenta de que necesitábamos un espacio para que la gente que, vine, que venía a visitar la finca o a comprar su paquetito de café pues tuviera un lugar donde se pudieran sentar y le pudiéramos preparar el café que se estaban llevando a su casa. Así que este tipo de conceptos trajo esa... Esa, ¿verdad? Esa, esa moda. Esa cultura, esa cultura de, de barista. Exacto. Porque antes de eso, o sea, todos hacíamos café colado en una media. Exacto. Todo el mundo tiene una greca en su casa. Y era, era algo rutinario. Sí. Eh, pero ahora se ha convertido en, en un aspecto social. Sí. Even though coffee shops have popularized and local coffee consumption has increased, production has significantly decreased in the past 30 years. In the early 90s, we produced 95% of the coffee, and nowadays, we're only producing 8%. It's easy to blame Hurricane Maria for this decline, but the reality is that the year before the hurricane, coffee production had already fallen by 76%, which means this is a trend, and if we don't do something about it, there won't be any truly Puerto Rican coffee in the near future. If there were more incentives supporting small farmers to pick local beans, we could produce and export way more high quality coffee than what we currently do. Domenico Celli is a New York-born Puerto Rican who spent his summers and Christmas breaks with his grandparents on the island. After Hurricane Maria, he decided to move back and do what he could to ensure our coffee culture isn't lost. Salud. Is, salud. Sorry, I, I jumped the gun. You know, if it's not alcohol, then... Cheers on this? Okay. So this is the coffee that you were able to save after Hurricane Fiona? Yeah, so this coffee is the, is the product of 19 different small farmers this and over 300 volunteers in the immediate three weeks after Hurricane Fiona. So Centro Tanama, this is where we're at right now in Ajuntas, mm -hmm. and then the project Forgotten Forest. Um, talk yeah. to me a little bit about that so I can understand it. So a couple years ago when we started Forgotten Forest, the idea was that the only way for small scale farmers in Puerto Rico to be viable would be to focus on specialty and value-added agriculture. And coffee um, is one, a value-added agricultural product with a specialty market around the world. And two, something that's obviously extremely important to our culture um, and society here in Puerto Rico. So that's where we decided to focus. Is this something that you have to collaborate with the government? Because I know that you're doing this as a nonprofit. I know that you're getting a lot of volunteers. How, how do you react to that? I think the coffee industry and the agricultural sector in Puerto Rico, it's in many ways, me. yeah, that's why it takes some more. Uh, it's definitely a microcosm um, of kind of the issues that take place on a larger scale across the island and, and throughout our history. And that's another reason why I think we're making, or at least in my mind, um, we're making such a statement by having an independent and prosperous uh, coffee industry in Puerto Rico, we're taking something that has traditionally been so culturally important to us and is now kind of controlled by these monopolistic and, and government forces and put power back into the hand, uh, hands of small-scale farmers. So that's, that's the whole mission of what we're doing. 
is kind of de-risking the first few steps for farmers to um, engage in specialty production and 100% Puerto Rican coffee production. The work that I'm doing, the reason why I've stayed, I've stayed here and decided to make this my home and whatnot is because from Maria to now, I've just gone deeper and deeper into kind of this world and I've been looking around and seeing that the work that we're doing is good and that people appreciate it. Um, so the reason, the reason I'm here is because there was no one doing the work that we were doing and I felt that it was something that needed to exist in Puerto Rico, so we had to step in and, and create it. So yeah, that's part of what we're doing is creating, not necessarily fighting against the government, but creating an alternative where farmers don't have to interact with or don't have to have the permission of uh, the government to succeed. How do you sell a specialty product from Puerto Rico to the world? So that, that's, that's another thing that I really want to highlight to uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners in Puerto Rico. It's easier to get stuck in a mindset of being a small business owner and just seeing your local surroundings. But really in Puerto Rico, for all the challenges that we have and kind of our problematic relationship with the U.S. poses, but we also have access to a global market around the world if we're, if we're willing to, to go out and explore and look for it. We're not only exporting a product, we're also exporting our culture um, and our story to other places in the world that have, that have never heard of us. Bueno, Manolo, vamos a pensar cuánto café recogimos hoy. Entonces, para pa ver cuánto hice con él. Sí. Coño. <risa> Seis libras. Seis libras. Seis libras. Entonces, ¿cuánto sería eso? Eso sería como, como medio peso ahí. Medio ¿verdad? peso. Bueno, lo que pasa es que, mira qué lindo es. Eh. Chacho. Te ganaste los dos expresos. 50 centavos en todo esto. Ok, los cojo. <laughs> three perspectives, three ways to sustain, maintain, and evolve our beloved Puerto Rican coffee. And I can't help but ask myself, what do your six pounds look like? Whatever it is, it's now present in our minds. Coffee shouldn't be another routine in our busy lives. It should be a ritual that honors the people who picked it, roasted it, and packaged it for our consumption. A sort of nod to the connection of our land that gave us so much for so long. Although Puerto Rico's coffee industry has many challenges ahead, educating ourselves can bring us closer to solving them. And as the world continues to move fast, maybe we stop for a second to drink our coffee slow and say, thank you. Thank you.